Hi, my name is Teresa Linden. I am a Catholic fiction author and today I would like to share with you a little bit about what, in, what went into my newest release, Tortured Soul. This story is unlike anything that I've ever written. Most of the books that I've written are geared toward Catholic teens. I have a young adult contemporary series, a dystopian trilogy, and I am a member of CatholicTeenBooks.com. But this story was written for adults. I felt inspired to write something for the past couple of years that would draw attention to the holy souls in purgatory and their need for our prayers, and that's what Tortured Soul is. This is a supernatural thriller that is set in contemporary times in upstate New York, even though it is inspired by the experiences of modern-day mystic Eugenie von der Leyen, who lived from 1867 to 1929 in Germany. Eugenie was a princess, and she lived in a castle in Wall, Bavaria, in Germany, which if you go on Google Maps, you can type that in, and you can actually see the, the castle that she lived in. She was a very well-educated, well-loved woman, and I got the impression, the more I read about her, that she knew just about everybody in town, including the shepherd who had died several years previously. She was very devout, but she was not a saint. Now, many saints have had similar experiences receiving visitors from the souls in purgatory or seeing visions of purgatory, but I wanted to use Eugenie's experiences because she was not declared a saint, and the work of praying for the holy souls in purgatory is not just something for the saints, it's something for all of us to do. So I hope that message comes through in this story. The second reason that I chose her was when she started receiving these apparitions, she told her confessor, who then ordered her to keep a diary of all of the experiences. This diary was later handed over to Bishop Eugenio Pacelli, who later became Pope Pius XII. In this diary, she recounts all of her experiences. She describes what the souls looked like when they appeared to her, what they said, what they did, and how they made her feel, which sometimes was uh, she felt great compassion and felt sorry for them, and other times she felt terrified, depending upon the level of purgatory that the soul came from. In one experience, she describes a soul who appeared in her bedroom as looking like a tree, and he terrified her, but she prayed for him. She was very much a courageous woman. And after praying for him for several days, she offered her Holy Communion. She said extra prayers. She used holy water, sprinkled it on the soul. He started to look more like a person. And if, after a few more days of prayer, she could tell that it was a man. And then after um, more days of prayer, she began to think that she recognized the man, that it was the shepherd who had died several years previously, who she had prayed for during her life. She called him by name, but he was not able to respond to her because he wasn't given permission yet. So she continued to pray for him until he was able to communicate with her and he could tell her a little bit about his story. <clears throat> I combined two of the souls that appeared to Eugenie for the sake of the plot, and um, one of the souls had a dark connection with the actual mystic, and the same is in my story which I can't really share that connection right now without spoiling the story, but this is very much a story of mercy. It's the mercy that my main character, whose name is Jeannie Lyons, which is a modified version of the visionary's name, Eugenie von der Leyen, she is called to show mercy to this soul, but the soul also experienced the mercy of God in a very profound way, which comes through the story. Purgatory itself is the mercy of God. That and a lot of other teachings about purgatory do come through in the story. For example, the souls benefit greatly from our prayers and our sacrifices. Depending upon the state of one's soul at death, there are different levels of purgatory that a soul could be in. The souls in purgatory experience intense pain, unlike anything that we have experienced in this world. But they also experience intense joy, again, unlike anything that we have experienced in this world. Their suffering is very much a great longing for God that they experience, and they wouldn't have it any other way. 
they want to have that pure love that is necessary for a soul to be in the presence of our all holy God. I am honored to have the endorsement of Susan Tissoni for this book. As many of you likely know, Susan Tissoni is known as the Purgatory Lady because of how many nonfiction books she has that have prayers, devotion, and explain what purgatory is. She also gives talks on the subject. When Susan read this book, she gave me a phone call and told me specifically what she liked about this story. She also told me that it is unlike anything that she has ever read, and she feels that this story could reach many souls with the message of purgatory and encourage people to pray for the holy souls. And her endorsement reads, um, Teresa Linden's tortured soul gives an accurate, captivating, and novel way for readers to learn about and better understand the church's teaching on purgatory. Well, that's all I have for you today, but I would like to have future videos that talk more about purgatory and a little bit more about my book as well.